Okay, y'all, our mad typist, a.k.a. whatever the heck that picture is. <laughs> uh, I couldn't even tell you right now. <laughs> is still having bandwidth problems. <laughs> yeah, it's called crappy internet service provider. <laughs> <laughs> so we will be coming in to you via audio logistic. And no idea there. We don't know where other pubs are. And anyways, uh, I guess mega upload. <laughs> oh, where the devil to start? You know, how does it feel to live in a SOPA world regardless of whether SOPA passes or not? <laughs> it's like, <laughs> I just love the fact that it's like, oh, okay, SOPA and PIPA both essentially get shelved for a while. And then they go after an upload site. Hmm, let me think about that. Hmm, yeah. <laughs> like, yeah, it's like, battle one, get rid of Sopa and Pippa. Battle two, get rid of the bullshit we already have that's creating bullshit like this. Yeah, <sighs> yeah you know, I said it to you earlier, and I, I agree. It, going after Mega Upload is like going after YouTube, saying YouTube is a piracy haven. Can I find movies and TV shows that shouldn't be on YouTube on YouTube? Yes. But the vast majority of content on YouTube is not that stuff. It's crap like our show here, or Mr. Bit, or uh, Jordan's, or you know any number of other people. You know, it, it's... <laughs> So, it, you know, it, it's kind of sad There's, uh, that that's gone. Um, you know, the people who are in jail are saying, are, you know, arguing that you don't understand our business. It's like, <laughs> we're not, yeah, um, you know, you got anonymous. Well, to me, it's kind of like, okay, you have all these file backup services and syncing services, you know, like Dropbox. Anyone can, if you have Dropbox and have the right info, you can pretty much get whatever is uploaded to that Dropbox. That's essentially what Mega Upload is, just with a web interface instead. Yeah, and there's nothing wrong with that. Uh, now, there were some people, uh, and a lot of independent uh, artists actually, who couldn't afford the bandwidth of hosting their stuff who were using Mega Upload for that purpose. Now, there were people sharing songs and stuff too, but uh, and movies and other stuff, but there were also people going, hey, you mean I get to use somebody else's bandwidth to distribute my stuff? Cool! <laughs> and that's what they were doing, and that's what uh, the whole Mega Upload business model was about. You know, like you're saying, a web-based thing. I, them shutting them down, I, I agree it sets it back because all the file sites, you know, the most notable one is FileSonic, but pretty much all of them have now gone to the business model of, okay, you're the only one on the planet that can access your Dropbox. Yeah. And I, I, okay, but what if what I put on there I want to share with other people? That's why I put it up there. Nope, can't be allowed. You have to be there, physically there, log in for them. Yeah, it, it, it's just stupid. It's such a pain in the ass. I mean, this is like we're going backwards. I swear to God. Yeah, yeah, okay. Scotty, we're stuck in reverse. I can give you more speed, Captain. No, Scotty, we're in reverse. More speed, Captain? <laughs> I can give you more speed going in reverse. <laughs> yeah. I can give you backward. Warp 10. <laughs> We're going to time warp. Backwards. Or is that instantaneous velocity? They can't make up their mind, can they? <laughs> it's ludicrous speed. <laughs> ah, so they've gone to plat. Backwards. <laughs> exactly. Uh, <it laughs> oh, that one's bad. Uh, yeah. Um, we just got hit with SOPA. <laughs> <laughs> Without the SOPA. Give me the SOPA. Hold the SOPA. <laughs> yeah. Oh, so we get Pippa instead, or Acta. Uh, yeah, we're we'll going to Acta in a minute. No, it's uh, something else that uh, from the show pointed out to us that uh, is relevant. It, it, 
in an ironical kind of way, supposedly the CEO. <laughs> Swiss Beats? Yep! <laughs> was the CEO of Mega Upload, who, it's, who interestingly enough is under no charges. <laughs> uh, <laughs> I, I, read, I read this and I laughed. Yeah. Because um, him and who was it? He's like, is he married to Alicia Keys or something? I, I forget, but oh. it's something like that, yeah. <laughs> they, him and Alicia Keys made a music video or something, or CD, or they, they made something, and they up, used Mega Upload as a way of essentially kicking the labels out of their business. Well, no, and there were other mainstream artists that had just started to do this, and I swear, more than anything, especially given what's shaking out now, that's really what taking down Mega Upload was about. Because what it was, was they figured out, wait a minute, we don't need to use our bandwidth like we have to do with things like iTunes and so forth, and we can still distribute and get it out there. And I like this. <laughs> well, and the biggest thing, here's the biggest thing. The record labels are a really big pain in the ass middleman. Yeah. And they're and their business model is broken. It don't work no more in this age of technology we are in. Here's an idea. Adapt or die. R-I-A-A or M-P-A-A. <laughs> I, 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 I agree. And more and more the artists are figuring out, especially because the labels and the industry are just that glorified middleman, are like, you know what? I don't make any damn money off the sales. Y'all keep all that money. I just want my stuff out there so people come to my shows where I make all the damn money. <laughs> you know, that's... Well, it's like, um, I'm assuming you know who Trent Reznor is from uh, Nine Inch Nails. Yeah. Um, I'm not a fan of Nine Inch Nails. Not particularly but myself, so. but <laughs> yeah. So I know. I, go, go ahead, though. I know what you're talking about, yeah. Uh, he's been saying since he left his record label that artists make no money when you take when essentially you take out a loan or the, when the record company that helps you make an album you're essentially taking out a loan mm -hmm. and it's like how can that business model work in this day and age when you know for the most part I don't want to say any Joe Schmo but anybody with any musical talent can essentially produce and put their stuff out there on their own well, and it's the same thing, honestly, with a lot of the publishing houses too. You know, you get and that, when you write that first book, nine times out of ten, what they do is they give you an advance. And if you read the fine print of the contract, it says that advance counts against future sales, which means yeah. you, unless you like have a New York Times bestseller or million copies book. That advance is all you're going to get, and depending on how the contract's worded, when all's said and done, you may actually owe them money. Yeah, because nine times out of ten, usually in some way, shape, or form, legally ends up being a loan. Yeah. So, it, it, and it's the same thing with the record industries and, and, and everything else. And, and like you're saying, and, and, and you know, a lot of the stuff that's been showing up on... One of the oldest examples of this is actually South Park. You know, South Park started on the internet. Comedy Central said, come make a TV show. You know, the, 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 they live the dream. But that's not the exception to the rule anymore. That, that's more and more stuff. I mean, look at all the stuff on Adult Swim, Children's Hospital, all those one, two series sicko cartoons, like Lucy, Daughter of the Devil, uh, so on and so on. You know, they start on somewhere else and they wind up you know, getting adopted by mainstream when mainstream realizes they're popular and they're like, oh, yeah, only by then they don't need mainstream, so mainstream has to make a favorable license with them to even get it. Uh, which, in my opinion, not a bad thing at all, you know. <laughs> I agree. And yeah. I, I just find that this will be an interesting time in the internet. I really do. Well, it will, and see, what's scary about this is what everybody was afraid SOPA would do. And the reality is we got some bad laws on the book that let it be done anyways. Uh, like what's happened with Mega Upload. But basically, if you're creating a business right now, 
and your business is dealing with distributed technology or media distribution or uh, financial uh, efficiencies. You know, at the, there's the other industry that is emerging right now, uh, and it's largely internet based, is the idea that we have realized we technically don't need Visa, MasterCard, Amex, or the check clearing houses anymore to move money around efficiently. We can encrypt it, move it around digitally. You know, there's more utopian interpretations of that, like the bitcoins, but there are also much more pragmatic ones that are just going, uh, all the money's digital anyways, we can pretty much, you know, we don't actually need to go through this old system where things had to be signed and stamped and everything else, and they've kind of done that anyways, so we can... Yeah, I was going to say, you know, I deal with a local bank, you know, in that regard, and I access all, you know, I don't even use any real MasterCard or Visa or any of that crap. Mm -hmm. Everything I do is off digital. I mean, I use, I know some people have issues with PayPal, but, you know, I most of the stuff I use is either direct debit or what have you. Oh, and there's there's not inherently anything wrong with that, and that's the other thing that's going to come to a head before too long, because, it, again, it's a shift of how things are done. You know, that's the same shift we're having with the record industry and, and the movie industry here. They're like, what do you mean we're not in charge anymore? We've been in charge for a hundred years. People have to come through us. No, they don't. <laughs> Not if your business model is broken. Yeah, I'm with you. They need to adapt, or no matter how much they go kicking and screaming, even if they make it take 20 years, they're going to die. You know, they're at this point they're delaying the inevitable. That's just um, and adapt all the, or die. That uh, is a business model. Yeah. Uh, well, the really funny thing about it is, in them delaying the inevitable, they're actually hurting the United States considerably. There is a number of people, some of whom are Americans, some of whom aren't, because of this bullshit, they don't want their servers in the United States of America, they don't want a .com domain, they basically want to be as far away from our insanity as possible, because they know we've gone nuts! <laughs> it's because, um, I'll, I'll save this for the next round when we get into the more SOPA debate about it. Um, yeah, you already know which one I mean. Yeah, yeah, I, I, I do. Uh, it, it, this is just one of those. It's gonna get uh, uh, the one other thing that's indirectly related to this, uh, uh, though it's technically also related to SOPA, is anonymous or you know individuals being anonymous. You know, I always have a hard time calling anonymous anonymous because it's just you know, you know it's like oh, I'm anonymous today. It's like <laughs> the cracker group known as anonymous. <laughs> Anyways, uh, yeah, and this is the other thing you can do uh, uh, that they one of the denial of service attacks that's been put up is JavaScript based. Um, there's versions of it where you know that you're having it, but because it's JavaScript. Uh, basically, this is the ultimate plausible deniability, and it really is the ultimate plausible deniability because there are holes in servers that can allow people to attach JavaScript to a page without the administrator's knowledge. Uh, and it's real easy for a system administrator to just suddenly go ignorant for a few weeks and somehow allow this code to come attached to the web pages they administer and everybody who views those pages will be participating in a denial of service attack and not even know it. Um, <laughs> it's essentially the ultimate botnet. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, um, and, and that is, you know, warfare in the 21st century. Uh, you know, short of quarantining the entire internet, which pretty much defeats the whole purpose of having the internet, there isn't a way to stop this. <laughs> uh, and even the and even though some uh, industries have taken the stance once they detect the script, the reality is there's a lag of anywhere from three to ninety days between crawls of low priority pages. 
you know, very, very few sites are crawled daily, let alone more rapid than that. So, yeah, this is one of those, I, yeah, that's, I don't, ah, <laughs> It's fun to be in the internet age, don't you think? <laughs> it used to be. <laughs> Not so much, and sometimes I wonder nowadays. Uh, oh, well, I put the wrong title up. I had the, I had the iPhone kill switch topic up. <laughs> We've been talking about Mega Upload this whole time, and the whole time it said iPhone kill switch. That's a topic that needs more research before we go into it. It's an interesting topic, but it needs corroboration, as we've decided, given the nature of the reports. <laughs> Steve Jobs already said a long time ago that there was a way to kill an iPhone remotely anyway. Yeah, uh, it's, we talked about it, but basically because it's third-hand accounts, since we're not... Uh, okay. Since the topic was up there, and we've brought it up. It's an Apple topic anyway. So. Yeah, yeah, okay. Well, yeah, we'll, we'll, we'll go into it in another part. <laughs> uh.